Hey everybody, it's Triple L, and hey, it's time to talk Shokugeki no Soma chapter 278. You gotta believe it, like, the author came through for us, because what we've ended up getting in this chapter was just uh, funny stuff. Ugh, okay, man, there's a whole thing I want to do with that last page of this chapter. I'm not gonna do it yet, I'm gonna wait for about four minutes so that we're in the safe zone of just, you know, people who want to be here can just listen to that part, but, uh, yeah. Alright, you know what, I'm gonna start off with a quick comment response from one of the longtime commenters, uh, Invader Rin, because, you know, Rin, I, I like your comments. Um, and, you know, I, I wanna just have some fun here, because Rin was pointing out some pretty cool stuff in his comment, or their comment last chapter. Um, specifically, you were doubting that Irina was going to be taken away. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of with you too. I did not think that she was going to be taken away at least this quickly. Uh, you doubted the whole takeaway thing in general based on uh, the author just making that a cliffhanger. And that uh, Suzuki was just feeling threatened. I was more hoping that this was just going to be put on the back burner and he was just kind of building up suspense, right? I thought this was going to be a situation where things weren't going to be happening, like, say, the next chapter, right? I was hoping that this was going to be something that they came back to. But that's not what we got. Uh, Rin also touched on another point of the author loves to do cliffhangers that don't mean anything. In the previous chapter, we had that strange silhouette coming up on arena um if you watched that video last week i wasn't that energetic about it i didn't care about the cliffhanger because that cliffhanger was a trash cliffhanger it was pretty simple to tell or pretty easy to tell that it wasn't going to be anything important and i was willing to bank on it i think i mentioned it's going to be a non-important cliffhanger it was probably nothing that's exactly what we got at the beginning of this chapter um, if anything, we can open up the discussion again about the this author and his particular habit of using stupid cliffhangers or um, trying to get reader suspense up by using a cliffhanger. And you know what? I'm going to dial it back. I'm being a bit too negative. The cliffhangers have a purpose when you have a serialized magazine, right? It's just unfortunately for Shogaki no Soma, um, the worst examples end up being or just leaving a bad taste in my mouth, right? Right now, in terms of cliffhangers that have been lackluster, we had one that Invader Rin pointed out in their comment with the whole jewel generation and what Senzaimon ultimately picked them as. Um, we had one that involved Subaru, um, that was drummed up as a kind of cliffhanger, and then now we had that last week's cliffhanger, which was, which was ultimately trash. It was just a guy wanting a a autograph like mind you if that guy ended up showing up at the last page that would have been uh, you could have recovered it kind of but at this point you can see it for what it is it was just a tool to keep people excited right um, can you fault that it's it's the nature of the medium it's the nature of a magazine let them do what they need to do if they think that helps uh, keep excitement up um, considering that Soma is aimed or at least like considering the law little kids are also reading these manga um, this kind of tactic I'm okay allowing it you know I'm not gonna let it it's fun to talk about but it's beyond that it's not much else it's just uh, kind of annoying when you know what's going on with it. I don't want to call it dumb because it has its reasons for why it occurs as a mechanic. Anyway, moving on, Invader Rin also pointed out some stuff about the romance subplot that Suzuki was pretty much just this guy that's putting the fire under Soma's butt so that he can get moving romantically. And in that regard, in that part of the comment, we do kind of see that happening in this chapter. In this chapter, we finally have Soma potentially acknowledging Irina as someone he could be romantically interested in, or at least acknowledging something special with her. We finally have it going on. I'm not gonna lie, when Suzuki's doing this type of stuff, it's pretty cool, man. I like it. As a shipper, I like it. You know, I got into anime, one of the things I really enjoyed was just the whole shipping aspect. Whenever I see it happening in any shonen, I'm gonna get kind of elated. I'm gonna get kind of giggly. We also had some for uh, Nikumi happening in this chapter. All right. Nikumi's the classic type ship tease. I don't really care though because she's largely irrelevant, right? What can you do? Um, but we get to have that little moment with Irina and Soma and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It makes you feel like, okay, you know, Suzuki is helping us in some regards. But then 
We're at five minutes now, so I can talk about it. We get to the last page of the chapter, which is fully, uh, Irina has been kidnapped. All right. And listen, I am both really annoyed and really, really kind of excited. Mostly because I'm, I'm going to bring up some Yu-Gi-Oh stuff just as a joke, but I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed and excited. Um, one of the things that annoy me is just how easily manipulated Irina is in general. Uh, this isn't that big of a problem though, because we've established Irina is in a mindset where she could be easily manipulated. She's just a child. She's sheltered. She doesn't have a full understanding of how the world works outside of food, right? So her at the beginning believing that Suzuki could be nice because he's giving her gifts, while a seasoned person of a cynical world could tell you, you should not believe that. A sheltered girl of an idealistic world has every reason to think that uh, that means the person's good, right? But it is kind of infuriating because it goes back to that whole thing. Just the, everyone seems to have forgotten about the midnight chefs. And it's just kind of annoying to see simple mistakes like this unfold. Um, that said, kids are stupid. So if we use that general logic, it's fine that this occurs because they didn't think to... They didn't know better. They didn't think that the situation was as bad as it was. Even though, again, Soma being the sharpest one of the bunch had his inclinations to believe this was the case from the beginning. Soma, by far, is the guiltiest person here for not figuring out what was going on with Suzuki. Or so at least, I want to be careful saying guilty. He is the one character that you could have made a good argument against dropping the ball. Or, yeah, you could have made an argument saying that he dropped the ball the most of the people that were involved with the Midnight Chef exploration project, right? Anyway, before jumping into, like, the last little bit of just looking at that final page, um, the thing that just annoys me is just the thing that I've been pointing out in the previous videos. Uh, I did not want to have a save arena plot, and right now we're in a position where we might see some really annoying plot development in the sense that um, if it turns into a... You have to bust in there and save her, like physically save her. If we get that type of plot coming out of this situation at the end with Irina and Suzuki, that will be novel. That will be good. You know, of, of all the possible or right now of the variations that I can think of, that would be pretty cool because it requires some pretty cool maneuvers here. It, it requires something a little bit more direct. Um, I, I would love the novelty of it. The idea of the Elite 10 busting in to find Arena. That would be pretty cool. Let's not lie. I'd be into it. Um, so that'd be cool. If it turns into a more mental thing, we're getting a rehash of the Azami situation. If it goes into a more mental thing and we end up with an Arena that's being kind of pressured or blackmailed into behaving a certain way and doing things in a certain way, that's going to be a bit more infuriating just because that is the model of what we had with Irina's previous conflict. In the previous conflict, Irina was mentally enslaved to Azami's rhetoric. And so the point of that conflict was to get Irina to stand her own two feet. Now she is being legitimately restrained. So having it escalate to a point where Soma and the gang bust in there would be pretty novel and would at least, if we're going to be doing the save Irina plot lines, at least it would be something different than the previous one. So that'd be pretty cool. Right. And I I have no reason to believe that the author would want to do a rehash of the Azami situation unless the author really likes the mental drama of everything. OK, so, you know, going in with the idea of a very physical intervention and going into save arena. Uh, let's go to that last page. This last page is amazing. There is so much level the, the levels of both shittiness and edginess in this page are amazing, all right? Let's very carefully just look at this wonderful palace. Look at Buff. Oh man, look at those moths. Okay, so there are these moths and fluorescent lights. That's pretty cool, all right, all right, all right. It, it, it's pretty dingy. You look to the left and yo, man, chains. Chains are just dangling from one of the fluorescent lamps that also has some moths around, all right? That's pretty cool too, man, pretty edgy. Oh, oh, look at that. A destroyed I, I assume it's a curtain oh that that's pretty cool too and behind the curtain oh there's a fence all right I have no idea where the heck we are all right uh, let's move over to the right oh man look at this bulletin board that's pretty neat 
I imagine that's a map of, oh, that's a map of the world. Wow, neat. And darts. Darts. I assume that has something to do with their grand plans of taking over the world, right? Because, you know, this is this is this is pretty hardcore. Uh, oh, man. what What is this thing on top of that? Is that a, a ship wheel? Is that a ship wheel? It's behind. Okay, so okay, these guys like the thematics of traveling. All right, neat. Okay, let's look over on the right. Well, why do they need a, at least? If we count it up, there's at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven distinct monitors. Why do people need that many monitors? I don't know. Let's look at Suzuki's little pad here. All right, there's some debris on the floor. That's pretty neat. Zoom up a little bit, you have Suzuki sitting there like a badass. I should be calling him Asahi because it's, it's out in the open. This is a nice couch. It's probably the nicest thing in this whole place. And what? There's a dumpster fire. They have an actual dumpster fire going on here. Okay, I shouldn't call it a dumpster fire. I should call it a, like a, a, an oil barrel fire. What? Come on, man. What? What is going on here? Okay, I know I can tell that there's like some level of irony in calling it a palace, but this is the levels of shittiness here are on a whole other level. These guys are underground chefs, all right? They're not homeless people. These people make so much money working with the mafia, and this is the best they can scrunch up. And again, look at all the elements of edginess in this one shot. It's actually ridiculous. That is not even going into talking about this group of people where you have Esdeath, Escanor, Polnareff with a mask on, and Urahara, all right? At this point, I gotta ask, what's the difference between this group of people and say this group of people, or even maybe this group of people, right? Like, what, what, what is the difference? I mean, one of them even has a, a chainsaw. Guys, look, all I'm saying is that we are so close now to shadow games. Okay, maybe not shadow games, but shadow cooking matches, shadow duels. Man, I hope that in this den of edginess and dark stuff, I hope they have shot callers so that when they begin the cooking matches, the shot callers will shock people to death after they lose because that is all that we need. And man, I'd be totally into it. Uh, anyway, you know, all jokes aside, I'm actually really astounded at the level of just shabbiness that's going on in here, right? I am just... This is a lot of stuff. Like this is was this was like a collection of stuff that the author just jammed in there to make these guys seem as evil as possible. And it's while it's kind of funny, it's also it's kind of ridiculous. It, it it's really you know it's it's a bit overblown, right? Right? We all we all agree, right? This is a bit overblown. And again, like the girl with this chainsaw by far is probably the most overblown thing here. Like she's probably a meat expert because I can't imagine her trying to cut vegetables with that thing. But if she does, then that's I, I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you other than she must be a really great chef, right? Uh, but yeah, um, there's a novelty to this, but it's also pretty ridiculous. You know, I, I'm sure you could come up with a better topic such as just how far Shokeki no Soma has to go since it's, you know, it's in the mold of Shonen. It's in the mold of Shonen Jump. It's, it's kind of funny, right? If this had occurred in any other battle series, you know what's going to be happening. You know that it was going to turn into just a bunch of people fighting and you'd have this really awesome cool arc where you go to save the main character, the main female character, and you have all the different like minor characters stepping up and showing off their new abilities. That's pretty much what this would have been had Shokugeki no Soma not been a cooking manga. So it's just kind of interesting to see the patterns of a, ba a battle manga pretty much showing up for a cooking manga and then seeing how hard the author goes to try and justify how evil these people are. Like man, nothing speaks evil like a fire in an oil drum. And also, the people in the Shokugeki no Soma world have to just get with the program of, of workplace hazards, alright? I mean look at all that rubble at, the, at his feet. The guy could slip and crack his head on the cinder blocks. Am I the only one concerned about people's feet and heads here? Oh man, I tell ya, I tell ya. Anyway, that's pretty much uh, Shokugeki no Soma chapter 278. Again, there were a lot of really interesting parts here, right? There were the parts with the emotional development, there were the parts with Irina's naivety, and there was ultimately the part where she flat out gets kidnapped by the guy that everyone should have been suspicious of. And <laughs> I'm very curious to hear what you guys think about this because this is pretty hilarious on one side. Anyway. I'm going to leave it there, guys. 
Thanks for watching. Till next time, I hope you have a great day, because right now, Irina's not having a great day.